In this lab, we will calculate the density of this block. We'll calculate the error inherent in our measurements due to the instruments we use to measure. And finally, we will calculate the percent error of our results. Let's begin by calculating the density of this block. Density is a defining property of matter. We represent it with the Greek letter rho, and it is mathematically defined as mass divided by volume. So in order to calculate the density of this block, we will have to determine its mass and its volume. To measure the mass of the block, we'll simply use the two-pan balance. And if you don't know how to operate this, your instructor should guide you in the proper technique. To determine the volume of the block, you will need to make three measurements of the distinct sides. And we will refer to these as length, width, and depth. Once you get these measurements, you will multiply them together. So you will multiply the length times the width times the depth. Our measurements will be in centimeters. Your value for volume will have units of centimeters cubed. Once you have the value for the mass and the value for the volume, you will simply divide the mass by the volume and arrive at your value for density. Now we want to calculate a value that's called the net instrumental error, which basically gives us an idea of the inherent error in our measurement due to the tool we used, or how good was the tool that we used for the job at hand. So let me offer a few examples. Just suppose that I wanted to use this tool to measure from my doorstep in LA to my mama's doorstep in Georgia. And just suppose that I could lay it end to end and I uh, had the patience to do so and there were no, nothing obstructing my way, no freeways, no lakes, etc. This would be, I would get a quite accurate measurement with this. I wouldn't need such an accurate measurement. In fact, if I were a few miles off, I think uh, the distance from here to Georgia, that would be fine. So this probably would not be the best tool for that job. So now another example on another extreme flip side would be, what if I wanted to use this to measure my eyelash? Well, the smallest division on this tool is much larger than my eyelash. So here again, this would be the wrong tool for the job. What we want to determine is, was it the right tool for our job? Okay, intuitively, I would say yes, but intuitively does not build a bridge. We have to have a mathematical reason that our bridge won't fall down. So we are going to use a formula to measure the net instrumental, instrumental error, which is um, we take the delta x over the x. So this would be what the delta x refers to is the smallest possible measurement I can make using this tool with confidence. So note that this is in our centimeters, we have 30 centimeters. And if you will note, they are in between each centimeter, we have 10 equal divisions. So I could be pretty confident that I could get a tenth of a centimeter with this. But I'm going to take this a step further, and I'm going to assert that if I got in between one of these small divisions, that I would be confident that I could get a half of a tenth of a centimeter. And this is what our delta value is. So for this tool, it's unique to each tool, I could take a, a tenth of a centimeter and even go the extra distance and say I could be confident of a half of a tenth of a centimeter. And that value would be 0.05 centimeters. So this is the smallest measurement I can make with this tool with confidence. And that is what we will put up here. Down here we will put the actual measurement made. We have, we have taken three measurements with this tool. So we have three possibilities for error. So we, to calculate the error in our volume, we will have to take the delta length over the actual length measured plus the delta width over the actual width measured plus the delta depth over the actual depth measured. And all of these top values, since we are using the same instrument for all of them, will be 0.05 centimeters. A more accurate version of this formula would be to take the square root of the sum of these in components squared. So we'll take the square root of the delta L over L squared plus delta W over W squared plus delta D over D squared. And your instructor will let you know which one he or she wants you to use. Our final calculation is called the percent error. 
And this lets us know how good our, our experimental results are. This is a simple calculation. To do so, you will take the absolute value of the known value, the known value for density of your block, um, minus your experimental results for density. And please note that this is the absolute value of that. And you will divide that by the known value. Once you've got a value for this, you will multiply it by 100, which gives you the percent. And once again, this, this quantity is called percent error. It lets you know how accurate your results were. So now you have all the tools you need to complete the lab, and let's uh, do some good work.